we hear this command at the end of today's gospel, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I know I've told the Lord in my heart at times, Jesus, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> Are you serious? Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And, and he doesn't give any qualifications here. He doesn't say, you know, try to be perfect or attain to perfection. He just gives the command, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Of course, we know that we're continuing here in the Sermon on the Mount, and over the course of the last few weeks, we, we've heard our Lord setting out this incredibly high bar for discipleship. To be a follower of Jesus, he's setting out this incredibly high standard for us. And yet again today, we hear him offer this command to us as his disciples, be perfect, attain to perfection, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. We might say, how in the world, how in the world do we begin to be perfect? And there's a great mystery here because it's actually in humbling ourselves that the Lord draws us into perfection. Or as St. Paul would say in today's second reading, it's not in being really, really wise or really smart or having it all figured out. It's actually in becoming a fool that the Lord can make us perfect. Uh, he says, if anyone considers himself wise, let him become a fool so as to become wise in the eyes of God. If we, if we look at the lives of the saints, certainly we would see many fools uh, in the history of the church, people that did things that were absolutely crazy and ludicrous, all for the sake of the gospel. And the Lord invites us to this same reality. If we were to look at what's the wisdom of the world, What's the wisdom of the world, particularly in regards to young people? Young people should be getting good grades so that they can get into a good college, so they can get a good degree, so they can get a good job to make lots of money. This is the wisdom of the world. And then we can look at the fools in the history of the church, somebody like Francis of Assisi, who renounces all of his possessions, literally gives away everything that he has to live in a place of total and complete dependence on the Father. And yet we would say Francis is one of those people that attained to perfection. And even in Francis here, we're, we're given a little glimpse as to how do we actually live this out. It's not in making ourselves really wise or trying really, really, really hard. It's in humbling ourselves and living in a place of complete and total dependence on a good and loving Father. That is, rather than being really strong or really powerful, Perfection actually consists in humility and littleness. That is, living in a place where I acknowledge I have a Father who desires to provide for me. I have a Father who desires to take care of me, and I'm going to live in a place of littleness and poverty in complete dependence on Him. That this is actually what the Lord desires of us. In this command to be perfect, notice that Jesus attaches to it this description, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Reminding us of the goodness of the perfection of our heavenly Father. That you do have a Father who desires to take care of you, who desires to provide for you. And our perfection is seeking to imitate Him. Uh, that is living out of relationship with him. Now I realize that this might sound a bit sort of up in the clouds, like, well, this sounds really nice, Father, but how, how do we actually begin to do that? How do we begin to live in a place of dependence on our Father? Now there are practical steps that we can take, and thanks be to God, the church in her wisdom gives us seasons in the church to particularly do this. And one is just a few days away in the season of Lent that begins this Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. And certainly during these penitential seasons, we're invited to take up the, the threefold tool of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Now, before you decide what you're going to do for Lent, I would urge you, challenge you, to take time in the next few days in prayer to specifically ask the Lord, to specifically ask Jesus, what does he desire of you during this season of Lent? It's very easy to just see Lent as a self-help season. It's like, oh, I've, I put on a few pounds here. This is a great time to give up Snickers and other candy bars 
And this way I'll, I'll grow in holiness during this time. But I would urge us, my brothers and sisters, in the next few days to take time in prayer and to specifically set before the Lord what, what does He desire of us during this season. And, and certainly we should be looking for things in each of those phases, if you will, that we should be looking to, to increase our prayer in some way whether it's taking advantage of daily mass here at the parish or elsewhere, going to confession on a more regular basis, certainly a great gift you could give to your pastor during the season of Lent would be to go to confession, uh, to take advantage of that sacrament of the Lord's mercy. And of course, we can take advantage of the opportunities for Eucharistic adoration, spending time in silent adoration before our Lord in the blessed sacrament. Of course, Prayer is meant to be connected to fasting. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, our, our fasting isn't just to, to shed a few pounds during Lent. Fasting, as Jesus teaches us, is meant to connect us with our ache and our desire for him. At one point in the gospel, somebody comes to Jesus and they ask him, why do the disciples of John the Baptist fast and your disciples don't? And Jesus says, how can the wedding guests fast when the bridegroom is with them? And he says, there will come a time when the bridegroom is taken away, and on that day they will fast. That is, our fasting is meant to connect us to our ache and our longing for the bridegroom. It's meant to connect us to our ache and our desire for the Lord. So that way, this Wednesday or on Fridays during Lent, when we're not eating bacon or hamburgers or steaks, when we experience that ache of eating those delicious things, we can allow it to connect us with our desire for the Lord. That Jesus, as I, as I desire this thing right now, as I'm fasting from this reality right now, Lord, would, would this increase my desire for you? Would you increase the deep longing, the deep ache in my heart for heaven, for eternal union with you. And our prayer and our fasting is always meant to lead to growth in charity, growth in love. And this is why almsgiving is an essential piece of this puzzle. Uh, our almsgiving certainly pertains to financial giving, giving ourselves to the church, to different charities. Uh, but this is also meant to be a place where we're giving of our times, so whether that's volunteering or giving of ourselves in love to those around us. It's in taking up these, this threefold practice during this season of Lent that we can take practical steps to enter into a place of greater dependence on our Heavenly Father. And so again, my brothers and sisters, I urge us in the course of the next few days to carve out some time in silence and set this before the Lord, asking Jesus what he has for us during this beautiful season of Lent that we might live according to this command to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect.